Okay, uh, hi, uh, my name is Michaela and I am a PhD student here at Maastricht University in Brno and I would like to present my research about evaluation of the cross-lingual embedding models from the lexicographic perspective. So first I would start with what word vectors are because cross-lingual embedding models are rooted in uh, monolingual word vectors. So it's a mathematical representation of the word and it's uh, computed from corpus where the algorithm uh, computes how often uh, the word occurs, uh, the words occur next to each other. And uh, monolingual uh, em word vectors are uh, close to each other in each language. Um, so what cross-lingual embedding models are, uh, they are bilingual or multilingual uh, vector representations of these words and uh, as, we, uh, as we can see, We can see on this picture, these are two uh, separate monolingual language models. And what uh, cross-lingual embedding models does during the training, they find an alignment metric. So they align the, these two models into a shared space where similar words obtain similar vectors. I have a closer picture, so you can see uh, that uh, this is uh, the cross-lingual space of English and German. So you can see that um, uh, similar words uh, are close to each other. So for example, information and information are together. And why is this important for the lexicography? Because uh, they connect meaning across languages, so we can uh, extract translation equivalents from them. And uh, they are available for small uh, or rare language pairs uh, because they do not require any parallel corpora. Uh, and also they are more balanced in text uh, than, for example, parallel corpora that are usually from uh, legislative or public domain. And uh, in the NLP, uh, the retrieving of translation equivalents from the, these models is called the bilingual lexicon induction task. Uh, so uh, the current drawbacks of these models are that uh, the evaluation of these models uh, is uh, inconsistent uh, because every paper uses different evaluation data sets and report different precisions. So it's hard to uh, compare these models to each other. And also these data sets are compiled automatically. So usually they contain a lot of mistakes and irrelevant um, uh, wor uh, words such as proper names. And uh, of course, uh, they're lacking lexicographic perspective because these paper are mainly uh, from the NLP field and they concentrate on the technical side of the problem. Uh, so in my project, I evaluated three state-of-the-art models. Uh, first is Muse. Uh, this model came along with uh, of the biggest uh, evaluation and training data sets uh, that are widely used among the authors and uh, another models are VECMAP and PASTEX for multilingual alignment. Uh, I evaluated them on three language pairs, a uh, distant language pair, which is Estonian and Slovak, and then closed language pair, which is Czech and Slovak, and then um, a language pair that do not share script, which is English and Korean. And uh, my uh, goal was to set the crucial parameters for the evolution data set. So this data set would be unifying and reproducible for further research and of course of high quality. And uh, my motivation was to uh, make better evolution and when we have better evolution then we of course can set better uh, parameters for the training and the models improves. Uh, and uh, another aim was to link uh, the NLP and lexicography uh, for the cross-lingual models because they can benefit from each other. So. Uh, just briefly about the training, so it involves monolingual word embeddings. I used two of them uh, in my training. First was Fastig and second one was from Sketch Engine. Uh, this uses the same uh, algorithm, but they are trained on different data. 
And uh, another aspect of the training is the level of supervision. The models can be supervised, semi-supervised, or unsupervised. A supervised uh, uses uh, seed lexicon, which is word to word data set. Uh, these are uh, exam three examples of uh, my data set that I used. First was a uh, pirate dictionary. Uh, it, uh, it is compiled from English, Estonian, and English Slovak dictionary and then manually post processed. Then it's uh, Czech and Slovak, also manually uh, compiled from uh, uh, identically spelled words. So, for example, krasa, krasa, which is beauty, and uh, English and Korean, which was one of the Muse data sets. Uh, metrics I uh, reported in my paper was mainly precision. Uh, precision at K, which may, um, K is uh, the number of uh, extracted uh, target words for a source word, and it measures uh, the number of correct word pairs to the number of all uh, found word pairs, and uh, recall measures the number of correct uh, word pairs to the number of uh, all word pairs from the evaluation data set. Uh, evolution data set were compiled in a similar manner to the seed lexicons. Um, uh, what is important is that, for example, Czech and Slovak uh, was uh, otherwise co uh, compiled from different words that are different in uh, both languages. And um, uh, also important to mention that English and Korean, we use two types of data sets because Muse are being uh, criticized in uh, previous papers that they contain a lot of proper nouns, uh, such, uh, such as we can see these are two examples from the data set. So we also used uh, the other one that was uh, provided by Sketch Engine and this one contain, this one was um, uh, I think manually post-processed and uh, it contained more uh, basic vocabulary words such as cave of women. And the first parameter was uh, vocabulary. So a monolingual word uh, embeddings influence uh, the resulting quality and of course the type and size of the vocabulary. So we should use only the words for our evolution data set that are uh, included in the monolingual word embeddings, and we should avoid out of the vocabulary words, such as uh, multi word expressions, uh, since cross-lingual models, embedding models, do not handle these so far, so such as uh, takeoff or office supplies, or also words that need uh, more than one word to be translated in the target language, such as German word Grundschule, which is translated as primary school or elementary school in English. And also we should avoid a lo uh, low frequency words or words with zero occurrences that are not in the monolingual um, word embeddings. And also words that are left out during training, which means that um, uh, if we, for example, um, use uh, only first uh, 550k uh, uh, embeddings, then we should also have only words from these 55k embeddings in our evaluation data set. And uh, the monolingual embeddings that we used uh, have fast text ahead uh, between 300 to 600 uh, k words, and Sketch Engine was much bigger. Um, but uh, it doesn't always mean that bigger is better because uh, here we can see a uh, search for query bone and uh, with sketch engine tool and when we extend uh, the word uh, rank uh, from 10,000, like when we have 10,000, then we can get more relevant searches than when we have like very big uh, rank. So not all, it doesn't always get uh, better because we include also a lot of noise and it really depends on the quality of the monolingual word embeddings. So what we did in this experiment was that we first used only uh, first 50K uh, loaded embeddings and important to mention that uh, in Estonian and uh, Slovak and Czech and Slovak, we had also words uh, that uh, weren't in this first 50k, and we have all we had also out of the vocabulary words. So we can observe how the quality will change 
after we expanded these loaded embeddings. And uh, in English and Korean, we had only words that were in the first 50K. So uh, what we observed that, uh, of course, for English, uh, for, for Estonian and Slovak, um, the quality increased from 20% to uh, 50. And uh, for English and Korean, for example, it decreases uh, for mainly for fast text uh, monolingual embeddings from, uh, for example, 39 to 23. So the difference was uh, big, which means that the fast text embedding contain a lot of this noise. So uh, it actually decreases the quality of the mono. Um, also, the another uh, uh, trait of the evaluation dataset was uh, were inflected word forms, and uh, yeah, words occur in the context, so they are not necessarily in the basic form in the monolingual word embeddings. So, for example, when we search for word "tund," which is an hour in a Slovak language, uh, which it has. Uh, various forms, which only the last one word is uh, in its basic form. And when we have in the evaluation data set only don't equals hodina, uh, then uh, it will mark all other word forms as incorrect. But they are actually correct, they're just not in the basic form. So uh, our solution was to either include all the word forms in the evaluation data set, which is uh, very time consuming, or we can lemmatize the results. And then we can see that um, the result uh, change, uh, changes and it even increases a bit. Uh, so the other part, other was uh, part of the speech. So um, mo most of the used uh, data sets were co criticized uh, for containing a large number of proper nouns. So there were some efforts to um, create data set with even uh, uh, POS uh, distribution, but uh, not all uh, part of the speech are relevant to reflect model performance such as pronouns or articles or conjunctions or prepositions uh, because they are very uh, contextual and they vary from language to language and it's very difficult to uh, determine uh, the translation. So what we did in this experiment was that we tagged our evaluation data sets with part of speech tags. So this is just informational how, to, how they look like. So for example, Estonian Slovak was not very equally distributed. They had a lot of nouns. A Czech and Slovak was more equally distributed, but uh, the most important part was uh, Sketch Engine and the Muse datasets. So we can see that um, Muse, uh, Muse dataset had a lot of proper nouns. It was the largest part of it, and uh, a Sketch Engine has uh, had a lot of nouns. Mm, so uh, we. Uh, computed the recall for uh, with both evaluation data sets and we can observe very big gaps between two of them. So for example, this is VECMAP model that has 49% recall and when we measure the, uh, the recall with the sketch engine, it uh, dropped to 29, which is nearly 20%. So, um, uh, we looked uh, at a few examples. So first was um, that, uh, of course, Muse dataset uh, contain more correct proper nouns because VECMAP was uh, good at uh, identifying the equivalence for proper nouns, and also it was good at identifying um, good equivalence for international words such as Alice, Android, or Idol. And uh, these were a huge part of the data set. And, but, uh, and the incorrect uh, word pairs were mainly caused by the mistakes in the evaluation data set. So for example, there was word pair Android, Android, which is obviously not a Korean word. And for example, Yemen was translated as South Yemen. So that was also a mistake from the evaluation data set. And Sketch Engine uh, contained more uh, basic vocabulary words such as foods, animals, and numbers. And uh, these 
a model was mainly able to find uh, lexical semantic lexically semantically related words such as for coffee it found t or for 50 it found 14 and uh, it contained more verbs and verbs were the most complicated word group to find an equivalent for uh, the last uh, parameter of the evaluation data set were senses. So, of course, uh, some words can uh, have more senses than the others. For example, uh, word band, it can be music group, piece of code, range of values. And um, we can either, uh, we can decide how many senses we want to include. Uh, so we can compute precision uh, at one, which means uh, that we extract only the top one uh, translation equivalent, or we can extract even uh, 10, for example. But the more uh, translation equivalents we extract from one word, the precision decreases and recall increases and reversely. So for example, when we have word koklepe, which has uh, many synonyms in English. And in Slovak, for example, it has uh, two words, mluva and then uh, dohoda, for example. Uh, so if we, in, uh, if we extract only first three, we got only one meaning. And uh, if we extend, we can, also, we can have these two synonyms, so it will change of course, uh, the recall uh, and precision as well. So when we are deciding how many uh, target words we want to extract, we should also think about our goal. So whether it's material for lexicographers, uh, which requires higher recall, or for students, which requires higher precision. And the conclusion, so just uh, I mentioned three, uh, four uh, parameters uh, for the evaluation data set in this talk. And uh, the conclusion is, of course, monolingual word embeddings influence the quality of the resulting model. So we, can, we could observe that um, a sketch engine was uh, of better quality than Pastex, for example, and it really influences the model. And uh, uh, so far, cross-lingual embedding models are not good as uh, uh, self-sufficient uh, data, but it can be uh, used as a data supplement for, or for example, for low resource or rare language pairs, or it's also good for technical dictionaries because um, uh, they can be trained on a domain-specific corpora, so they can retrieve a uh, specific the vocabulary. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have time for uh, questions. Uh, are there any questions? Hi. Uh, thank you for the thank talk. You. So. Um, you were discussing about, I mean, that words can have several different meanings, right? But you're using static embeddings. So can you further develop on that? Because I would believe if you want to have any kind of disambiguation that you would need to have contextual models. Yeah, this, uh, there has been done some research on contextual models, but it's not uh, very good right now. So it is problem with these meanings. So what did you, can you just maybe explain a bit more how did you then treat uh, different meanings? So uh, I didn't fully understand mm -hmm. that part. Uh, well, this was just about uh, how many words to, ex uh, target words to extract for one source word. So uh, if we have one word in, uh, in the source language and we extract, for example, only the first one, uh, we will n neglect all other forms. So, uh, for example, and when we have in the evaluation data set that Kokulepe is Zmluva and Dohoda, for example, uh, and we extract only first one, then uh, we, the other one would be like incorrect. Thank you. Other questions?
you mentioned in the beginning some procedure how you uh, align these bilingual uh, uh, relationships. Maybe you can repeat it again. You mean this one? Yeah. So um, these are two separate language models. Uh, and uh, during the cross-lingual embedding training, uh, the uh, model tries to find uh, alignment metrics between uh, these two models uh, so that it can align these two into one shared spade. Sh so uh, similar words would have similar vectors. So then uh, between these similar vectors, we can compute cosine similarity and then extract the translation equivalence. But uh, in the first picture, we see that the vectors are kind of not, not similar, meaning that, that the uh, vertical values, if we look at them at, from this point, are, are, are quite different. And then you align. Is it uh, some special method or some some algorithm or, or approach? How exactly you you are doing it? Yeah, it's called uh, projection matrix. Um, I'm not really sure how how it works. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. It's Thanks. Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, any other questions? I would like to ask about uh, corpora. You say that uh, it's not good to have too large corpora. Um, so, how, uh, what is the optimal <laughs> size of the corpora? Or uh, uh well, um, there is. I don't think any optimal size. It depends on how well the embeddings are trained. So, for example, in this case of Sketch Engine, even the Sketch Engine was very big, but it was still able to produce a very good results. So, uh, it means that the monolingual embeddings were very well trained. But uh, sometimes, when we have a bigger uh, corpora, then uh, we can, when we extend this uh, number of embeddings that we have, uh, we include also a lot of noise. So, but in our experiment, the optimum was uh, these uh, 300 to 400k loaded embeddings. So that was uh, for time and for results. So it's not always uh, good to have just more and more data. Yeah. <laughs> yeah good to know. Uh, any other questions? That's really a small question because I'm not really sure. In this case, um, what do S, I, and U stand for with U's and the vector maps? Uh, these S? Yeah. Uh, it yeah. means that it was trained in supervised mode, so oh, we used okay. data yeah. sets to train okay. better. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, thank you very much.